there, there is something in the student-teacher relationship where the teacher and the, and the work of the teacher remain somehow distant, right? Somehow apart. And to me, that's, to me, that's a lost opportunity. Tangent started, I think, 2008. Um, we, uh, and by we, I mean Gabrielle Russomagno, Yvonne Love, and myself, uh, got together uh, a little bit over coffee, as I recall. And we started talking a little bit about uh, what you do when you start taking things like projection and physical stuff and imagery and collage in time. Uh, and what would happen if you started to kind of bring those things together? The seeds for Tangent were really sown a long, long time ago. Uh, and I think the idea that we collaborate uh, as artists, which is an unusual way to work as artists, uh, was, was really something, an impulse that had sort of formed fairly early uh, in our careers as artists. I mean, I think that for me personally, I've always collaborated and um, when my sister and I were little, we always used to draw together. So we'd lay on our stomachs on the floor, making drawings of monsters and things. And my uncle is also a professional artist, and he and I used to do that too. He's 10 years older than me, but we always used to, when I'd go over to his house for holidays, we'd always draw together, and then we, we corresponded together, and we would build on each other's, draw. we would draw in our correspondence. And so I've been collaborating for years. Um, and so it's a, it's a very natural kind of fit. With Broken Spoken, that although we had the idea of broken spoken, the content was really driven by the confines of the space that we were provided. Um, usually the co our content is driven by theme. The most interesting part was using the images that people drew to put into the envelopes. So yeah, we through the, the part of the redacting of the, of the glycine wall that we helped to build, uh, we built had a lot of the students uh, contribute drawings, so we were part of that, and we were also part of collecting these and getting a whole mass of images to put into the glassine wall. Yeah, the glassine wall is just the envelopes, and so everybody puts their idea into the envelope. And during this uh, setup, and we also have the like people visiting the gallery, and we ask them to draw pictures for us. So we got like, a lot of pictures us to put into the envelope. For the Dumbo Walk, we were invited um, to participate in, a, in a, another kind of collaboration by Yiquan, um Peter Kim. And so many of us were, many artists, I think there were 12 of us that actually walked. Mm -hmm. And um, we met um, in Manhattan in the financial district and walked across the Brooklyn Bridge. So a lot of the um, ideas that uh, the other artists had had to do with the financial district. And ours definitely could relate to that as well. So we decided it was going to be the first iteration of our, um, we're doing a whole series of pieces on redaction. Um, and so this particular one we called Fly Spec. And Bill had this great idea. We redacted ourselves by dressing in these white, um, what is the material? Tyvek suits. Tyvek suits. And so we redacted ourselves. Um, we were making redaction marks with water, drawing with water on the ground. And we had, um, we each had Mike's soundtrack strapped to us, and we were playing that as we walked, so people could hear it in an asynchronous um, combination. We it's the bags. first time that we see that much, that many uh, artists gathering together yeah. and doing one thing. Mm -hmm. And it was nice to see like that kind of collaboration um, into one strong statement, and to see it go through a, a huge city with so many people and everybody stopping and seeing and in a way that that in itself was redaction like their statement was being redacted by so much of all the New York City noise so. uh, you know we were talking about fly spec and we were thinking well what about the buzzing of flies and we were thinking about how we could um, how we could incorporate the sound of the buzzing of flies so I thought well we'll just hatch a bunch of flies and then we'll will record the sound, but then I realized that they were beautiful, and so then we <laughs> videotaped the flies, and then we got lots more flies and, and hatched lots, so I think that we had about 3,000 flies that we hatched and, um, and videotaped, and so 
we also wanted to use the Tyvek suits as sort of an artifact, and then we projected the, the buzzing of flies into the suits. So where we originally had thought of these flies as an object, really they became a, a, a document. Um, and so they were, both, they were both present in their live state as a video and in their dead state in these vitrines. And I don't know that we originally thought of the vitrines no. as objects. We really thought of them as cages. Right, and I was making comments like the fl that they shit all over the inside of these vitrines. So the fly speck actually became intensified in a way that we hadn't expected. And it caught the projection so beautifully. We were like, this is, this is like the piece. So, um, and also yeah. the, the flies inside the suit, we, kind of, we wanted to make, the, even though they were artifacts, we wanted to make them have a life of their own as an artifact. I love teaching, um, and I've always taught, and um, I love sharing what I do with my students, and have always done that. I've done lots of Acura projects and internships in my studio, and I think it's just sort of the next step um, for, for showing you guys what, what it means to be an artist, how we work as an artist, how we work as artists. Um, and open another world and realm of possibilities. Um, so for me, it's really important um, pedagogically. Um, and I don't see, I am never not being an artist, and I'm really never not being a teacher. My, t my children will tell you that. Um, <laughs> In a very loving way, I'm sure. Um, but uh, so I, I'm, I, everything is always together. And those of you who have, you guys have had me as a classroom teacher as well, so you know that because I'm always telling you what I'm working on, and I'm, you know, so I'm always thinking about things, and I don't disconnect any part of who I am as a person or an artist from what I do here in the classroom or out in the field. And I think it's great for you guys to be immersed um, and, and seeing us work through our process. For me, I think. Um, a lot of a, a lot of the traditional pedagogy of art is one of apprenticeship. You see that kind of historically, um, and to become an apprentice means to watch. Right? Uh, when you uh, when you watch someone work and you watch that intensely, there's there's something uh, profound in that. So being part of the Acura project is, is a great experience because it allowed us to work as a team on you know various different projects simultaneously. They were always they were happening one they weren't happening one at a time. They were happening at the same time. So it was a lot of uh, time management that we had to you know be a part of. It's kind of life learning in a way. Um, it's the first time that I do this kind of stuff with other people. So this is a new collaboration new for you. Yeah, and it's, you know, we got to see the artistic process and take an active role in it. We weren't just, you know, we went beyond being apprentices and we actually got to put our input into each one of these projects. Yeah, so it was, it was nice to see our professors and, and see their artistic views and how they go through um, different artistic venues and see their, their process and them being collaborators, collaborators um, together. And they've been doing it for so long, it's kind of you just got to see how they do it. Yes. And also we see the, the, the other view of the art industry. It's not just Gary selling pictures. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's also performance art and the, the installation of the broken spoken wall. And uh, we have learned so much that we cannot learn in the classroom. Using the, the community as a way to collaborate, you know, the drawings were like a collaboration, like it was a collaboration of drawings. Yeah. So. And so much about art is, is doing, so there's only so much you can, you know, learn in the classroom setting and taking it outside of the classroom setting really reinforces a lot of the things that we've already learned from our professors. Mm -hmm. The student teacher relationship can be one um, of, I, I don't want to say disinterest, but I can say there is something, there, there is something in the student-teacher relationship where the teacher and the, and the work of the teacher remain somehow distant, right, somehow apart. And to me that's, to me that's a lost opportunity. To me, uh, the fact that I work um, and the fact that I teach 
are two things that are not only not incompatible, but they are two things that can that can uh, build upon each other, right? That one uh, can rest on the foundation of the other. That the two, not only can they coexist, but it's more rich if they do coexist, right? So this idea that students would kind of come into the studio, kind of come into Tangent, be a part of the work, uh, and, and maybe even go beyond watching into the realm of doing, uh, suddenly makes, those, makes the students, um, in a practical way, peers, right? Now I think that's a very interesting dynamic, and I think it's a much more I think it's a much more enriching dynamic uh, for the student. I know it's more enriching for me. Mm -hmm. So, 